This is the Black Sea of the Atlantic Ocean lying between Europe and Asia. Bulgaria, Georgia, Romania, Russia, Turkey and Ukraine share the Black Sea coast. The Black Sea is an essential year-round transportation artery for the trade of energy, steel, and agricultural products at the crossroads of Europe and Asia is suddenly drawing the world's attention as the conflict in Ukraine unfolds. The Black Sea has at least 30 operating merchant seaports, of which 16 are in Ukraine. The most important Ukrainian ports are those of Odessa, Ilyashevsk and Yuzhny, all situated in the northwestern part of the Black Sea. These three ports alone totally account for 56.6% of the entire cargo turnover in Ukrainian merchant seaports and 38.28% of cargo handling in all ports and terminals of the country. ArcelorMittal and Medinvest are two of the major steel plants located near these ports. Ukraine steel accounts for roughly one-tenth of Europe's imports. Medinvest BV is a key producer in Ukraine with facilities in the country's industrial heartland in the east, and ArcelorMittal SA owns Ukraine's largest mill in the central city of Krivivri. A lot of these steel cargoes are blocked right now. That means higher prices in China, India, Europe and the US for the steel industry, which has a lot of use, including in the automobile industry. So that's rippling through globally. Ukraine and Russia account for more than a quarter of global wheat exports, nearly a fifth of the corn trade, and the bulk of sunflower oil. Ukraine's southwestern ports of Odessa, Pivdeny, Mykolaiv and Chornomorsk handle almost 80% of its grain exports. Shipments are now coming to a halt, with Ukrainian ports closed and Russian grain deals on hold. Shipping from the Sea of Azov has been suspended, stranding more than 150 vessels. The two countries have about 13.5 million tons of wheat and 16 million tons of corn left to ship. This means that the global price of food will increase, but especially in Egypt, Turkey and Syria, which are major buyers of Russian grain. But the world is more concerned about crude oil. Russia and Georgia are two major oil terminals on the eastern coast of the Black Sea that export crude oil. The majority of the crude at risk from break-in shipments from these facilities does not originate in Russia, but rather in Kazakhstan via the CPC terminal pipeline, which is located just to the north of the Russian port of Novorossiysk and handles approximately 1.3 million barrels of crude delivered by pipeline from Kazakhstan. Any disruption to tanker traffic in the Black Sea impacts Kazakhstan's exporters and foreign companies that own a major share of Kazakh oil grades. This table shows foreign ownership in major Kazakh oil grades shipped through the CPC pipeline. And Chevron, Exxon and Shell have a greater share. Supsa, further south in Georgia, is the end point of a pipeline carrying crude from Azerbaijan. According to BP's full-year results, the line carried about 31 million barrels, equivalent to 85,000 barrels a day, of crude in 2021. But almost 90% of the project's crude exports are piped to an export terminal on Turkey's Mediterranean coast. A small proportion of Azerbaijan's crude exports are shipped to Ukraine, averaging about 1.5 million barrels a month, and mostly loaded at Sapsa and delivered to either Odessa or Pivdeny. A pipeline connects with Russia's Druzhba pipeline that delivers oil throughout Eastern Europe and beyond. Romania and Bulgaria both import crude through terminals on their Black Sea coasts. About 200,000 barrels a day move from east to west across the Black Sea. There is a regular trade in Urals crude from Novorossiysk to the refinery at Burgas in Bulgaria, which also takes occasional cargoes of Siberian light and CPC blend crude. Romania imports a steady stream of both Urals and Siberian light and intermittent cargoes of CPC. The crude is processed at the coastal refinery at Midia or shipped along pipelines to inland plants from Constanta. If you're wondering what the Urals, Siberian light, and CPC blend are, they are the crude oil products named based on the chemical profiles, crude oil assays, and oil's API gravity. So. This conflict is impacting two of the world's largest economies that are deeply interconnected with the rest of the world for energy, raw materials like wheat, 
crude, and the steel industry. And so, these vessels being blocked, not only the numbers but also the type of goods they were supposed to carry means the impact on consumers in Europe and the US is almost direct. Russian oil now goes to China. So economically, China is kind of the winner. It's going to buy discounted oil from Russia, while Europe and the US have fewer options because obviously, they're refusing to buy Russian oil. So, supply will increase from the US or the European North Sea to replace Russian oil. So a lot of rebalancing is going to happen in some way naturally, but it's going to be costly. 